Okay. So I can see if I look a little goofy or whatever doing this. Please excuse me. I'll try to stay out of the camera shot as best as possible. A little bit of that extra clay off of there. And there is a little bit of white at the back of this eye showing. And considering the deer is actually looking left, that's perfectly fine because the eye would rotate that direction anyway. Now all the stuff that I'm showing you in here are all uh, commercial techniques. If uh, you go to actually um, compete, the uh, detail work and everything on these is a lot more complicated. And I have, uh, I've competed twice. And it's a lot of fun, and you go to get to go to the seminars and learn how to uh, maybe uh, do taxidermy on some different animals, or uh, actually learn how to do habitat. You know, just a lot of different things and stuff that you can learn. And it's always good as a taxidermist to uh, keep learning. It's when you get stuck in a rut that you get in trouble. this in. It's like I said, connect the eye to the, the glass part here to the uh, eye. And all this will be painted. It's like uh, any mounts that you see done taxidermy wise have uh, they have been painted. There's just no way to put the uh, lifelike skin tone colors and everything back into an animal unless you do paint it. That's especially true of things like uh, fish and everything. Those those are all completely painted. So I try not to put too much stuff in here if I don't have to. But sometimes it's like there's there's been a few times that I wasn't able to babysit these mounts like they should have been because of uh, like a family emergencies and things so and that's not much of an excuse. If you can't get to these a lot of times right away you can actually uh, bag the heads on them which you just basically that would that means uh, get like a plastic grocery sack or wrap them up in some kind of a plastic to slow down the drying on them. Just got a little bit of alcohol here with a paintbrush. I'm not sure if this brush will work or not. I might have to find another one. This brush is kind of long. Hopefully this is showing up. I don't know if it is or not. I'll show you a side view when I get done. bristles on this brush are just a little too long. Okay, we'll just modify it a little bit. I cut some of the bristles off of this, so I got a little bit stiffer brush. I did in, uh, what was it, year 2000 and 2009, I believe it was, yes, uh, actually went to the World Show Taxidermy and Fish Carving Championships in uh, St. Charles, Missouri. And that was really cool because I got to go to seminars um, with some of the, taught by some of the most famous people in the industry. And uh, that was really cool. And then they actually had a nice uh, big banquet award dinner after the uh, awards were given and actually went to that and sat at the table with uh, Rick Carter and Rick and Nikki Carter and uh, Ken Edwards and you know just some of the biggest names in the industry and that was really cool we actually sat at the table with them and uh, just real decent folk real good folk 
probably about where I'll leave that. So, like I said, I don't get real carried away with the uh, finish work on these. Like I said, most of the stuff that I do, I do with my paint. I just touch up what I need to on these. And then I'll fill this uh, little gland on the side. I will have to mix up a different color for that, so I'll be right back. And the color I'm going to put in this uh, gland right here, you may not be able to see it all that well. It's just a just a tiny bit of that epoxy clay mixed up. It's like I said, it's a it's more of a gray color. So I just want to put just a little bit of that in there. Mainly that's just to finish off the inside of that, so. part about this sculpt stuff is that uh, pretty much if you don't make sure you clean all your brushes and stuff right away that's you'll ruin a brush with this stuff it sets up like concrete and you can redo uh, rebuild tines and everything with this stuff it's really handy then I will go down and fix that bottom lip and here you can see the uh, Torn the lip that I was telling you about. And we'll see. So like I said, this is why I like this uh, the clay for any time you have to rebuild uh, any spots that may have hair because there is no gloss to the clay stuff. Cell phone. And this will be painted in as well. But there's just a little something different that we'll do with this. may have to wait just a little while on this, but I will actually texture this with a uh, brush. It may be too wet to do it now. But if you actually take and push a brush or something into that, you can actually get like a hair texture. So it's not just uh, smooth. Like I said, I think it's probably just a little too soft right now to even pick that detail up. So I'll just have to come back when it sets up a little bit and go after it with a slightly stiffer brush. So I will do the other eye, and then I'll do the nose. You try to kind of have to try to time this stuff. Uh, the brown colors I know that I'm going to use, I'll do the eyes and everything on that before the epoxy sculpt sets up, and then I'll go back and do the uh, pink colors and everything for the nose. So, we will get to that. Okay, here is the uh, eye that we worked on first. And here is the inside of the nose, and I have blended that in and that will be the uh, part that I'll paint that in and everything whenever and I have to wait for that to set up a little bit more before I can actually put the texture and put a little bit on the bottom lip and blended that in and then here's the other eye and they're all dirty and smeary now so anyway Generally what I like to do is go ahead and, and paint this and everything and then I will uh, get my electric leaf blower after it 
and uh, blow it real good just to fluff up the hair and get any uh, overspray from the paint out of the fur. And it'll fluff him up and make him look a little bit softer.